what's more, right? We got more. <laughs> so there's a process, right? <laughs> I don't know. If... This is where it gets harder, right? There's a process to becoming whole, right? And it's not, it's not easy, right? The Bible, we might call it, calls it sanctification, regeneration, right? Um, but there's a process to become whole. I'm going to read from... Exodus 34, right? I'm going to bring up generational curses, right? Because, right, uh, we all live with, I guess, we, we're like the products of our childhood, right? How our parents raised us, that affects how we are even today. I'm going to read from Exodus 34. This is where God proclaims his own characteristics, his own attributes. He says, right, this is Exodus 34. God reveals himself to Moses. It says, Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh, a God merciful, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. All positive, right? He says, but who will by no means clear the guilty? If you're guilty, you're not going to just be cleared for nothing. And he says, even visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the children's children, third and fourth generation, three generations. This is why people talk about generational curses, right? This is the biblical backing for it, right? And I, you can think of that in a spiritual way that God is just cursing you, cursing you, but I don't, even, I don't even think of it like that, right? Because we know, like I just mentioned, right, we are a product of, I guess, our childhood, how our parents raised us, right? And another fact is like hurt people hurt hurt people, right? So if I could be going through things that was brought on to me right by my parents, but it's not only their fault, right? Because it says to the third and fourth generation, because it may be that even my parents have hurt me, but it's because that their parents hurt them, right? And the cycle just continues, right? What do we talk about sin? Is that the cycle just it just continues? You see that in the Bible in Genesis, it it, it does this on purpose, right? The kids continually fall into the same sins that their parents fell into, right? And I think it's even just that, like, that's just how our parents, like, like they raised us, right? In my life, right, one thing that, the way that my parents raised me, right, I'm not, I'm not going to say any names, right? But I was raised to be kind of cold, right? Like, <laughs> right? When it came to things, uh, I was told, like, just, just... <laughs> Suck it up, right? <laughs> My mom's right here. Suck it up, right? Don't let nobody hurt you, right? Don't, if, if something hurts you, just say it doesn't hurt. Just say it doesn't hurt and it won't. And I used to do that. I used to literally, if something would kind of hurt, I would just say, it doesn't hurt. And I would literally harden my heart and it worked. It worked. But, but where does that lead? All right, we talk about how things just go deeper and deeper in high school. I, I did that to the point where it became, I became so numb that I felt I had no emotions, right? I've told you before, I felt like I was like a sociopath, but I was like, because God, I don't feel anything. I don't have no emotion whatsoever, right? I remember I would see this, in this on display when I remember Rochelle would leave for college, and I would be like, I don't care. And then I didn't, right? Straight up, like, I'm sorry, Rochelle, but like, I, I, I didn't feel any pain, and okay, right? That's because I don't want to feel the pain. That's why we do it, right? It's a coping mechanism, right? I don't want to feel the pain, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to harden my heart. I'm going, become, I'm going to become numb, but that's not how we're supposed to, it's not how we're supposed to be, because that leads to other things, right? Having that in my childhood, that affected how I related to even just girls, right? Even girls that I would interact with, I was so just nonchalant, like, whether you're here, whether you're not, I don't care, like, if you leave, so, and if anything, that, that created my toxic, like, relationships that I have with girls. That alone, the fact that I was so able to just let them go, right? I don't care if you leave. Well, okay, I don't, I'm not gonna go anywhere. Like, it literally created this toxic relationship. See how it affected me later on, right? And that's what, that's what it does, right? Our, our childhood and how we were raised affects us, right? You may shut it off and throw it to the back of your mind. It's, oh, if, it's, if I forget it, it won't affect me. It always resurfaces. It will never not resurface, right? That's why, it has to be addressed, right? We can't just numb ourselves to the point, right? If I grew up a certain way, if I experienced true like childhood tra trauma, I can't just bury it really deep and expect it to not come up later in my future, right? Because if I do, then I'm not gonna grow, right? You will not grow. Emotionally, you, your, your growth is hindered, it's stunted, right? Y'all hear what I'm saying, right? If something happens to you and it hurts so much, right? Like, how am I going to get past this? It's not going to get, you're not going to get past it by numbing it. 
right? It has to be addressed. And where do you see this in the Bible, right? The book, the book of Genesis, right? Joseph, the story of Joseph. What happens to him as a child, right? He's sold into slavery by his own family. He's hurt by his brothers. They, they do him so dirty. They do him so wrong, right? And so through a process of, of like literally, what, 13, 14, 15 years, it resurfaced, right? When he became the prime minister of Egypt, there's a famine and God ordains everything, but his brothers come right back, right? The ones who hurt him, are they resurfaced. And it was God's doing. It's not that, like it was just some coincidence. God brought them there. God wanted, right? It's God's will to make us whole. God did this for Joseph, right? Only, uh, yes, it was to save the people, right? Ultimately, Joseph says that himself, but even to bring Joseph growth, because it had to be addressed. That trauma that he lived with, it had to be addressed. And that's why, what do you see Joseph do? Every time he, he meets with his brothers, it says he goes and he weeps. He goes and he cries, but that's the right way to deal with it. That's the right way to deal with it, because he addressed it, right? And he didn't numb himself and grow hard, right? Because if you grow hard, you will never grow. It had to be addressed. Right? And that's what Joseph does. He goes, and it literally says that he went and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, right? He said, everybody get out of the room. And he was crying so loud when he revealed himself, right? Because there was so much pain that came right back to the surface. Right? When it came right back to the surface, he had a, it had to be addressed. But it was God's doing. Right? It was God that did it. God brought it back. Right? And it had to be addressed. But what God was doing was good. He was reconciling, right, a family. He was bringing them right back together. Even though it hurt, even though they did him so dirty, even though what it, what it took, the cost, right, the sacrifice was so much pain on Joseph's part. God put him through the pain, but it was for his growth, right? And that's what I'm preaching right to y'all today is that if we wanna become whole, it's through Jesus, right? It's when we repent, but we have to submit, like what if God puts us through something that's gonna, that's gonna break us, right? What if things resurface in our lives where but it's the process, but that's what it takes. You know what I'm saying, right? That's, that's what it's gonna take for, for me to get past that, for me to grow, for me to become fully human, right? Fully functioning, emotionally, spiritually, physically. This is what it takes. What did Jesus say when he healed? Your faith has made you whole. It made you whole, and he was talking physically, but God is looking for us to be whole even emotionally, right? Y'all hear what I'm saying? And what does it take, right? It has to be addressed. And it's, it's going to be painful. Like with Joseph, it was painful, but it had to be addressed, right? And so it's up to us to recognize, right? God, like I look at my parents and I understand, I'm not going to blame them, right? It can be my parents, my parents can be the reason why I am that I am, but I know that it's because their parents that they are the way that they are. I'm not putting blame on anybody, but I'm going to stop it, right? When it comes to my children, I'm not going to do that, right? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that off. This is where it's going to end. Right? Because I want my kids to be fully whole, fully functioning, right? Whole humans, right? And this is what it takes, right? And so what is, the, going back to Genesis 3, what is the road back to intimacy, right? What was lost in Genesis 3? It was an intimacy with God and an intimacy with each other, right? Man and the wife. So what's the way to get back, right? The, the way to become fully whole again is just that love, that intimacy. And it's gonna take a, a continual process. And intimacy with God, right? Loving God and becoming fully intimate with Him, that's gonna, that's gonna build, right? That's gonna heal you, right? That intimacy with God, right? Right there, right? The people say that's the cross, right? Not only our relationship with God, but also our relationship with each other, right? The cross, right? Whatever. It's gonna take that intimacy with each other, right? Reconciling, right? Even with those who hurt me or whoever, right? It's gonna take that intimacy that intimacy, that love from others to be healed, right? God heals us, yes, and it'll be supernaturally, yes, but he also uses each other to bring healing, right? And that's why the Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. It's our job as a community, right, as the church. We are the church, right? We are, we are the body of Christ. How is God gonna bring about healing? We have each other, right? This is what church is. This is Christianity, right? Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And just your presence, you just being there. I'm telling you, like, that just means the most to people who are fully, just, who are hurting, right? You don't even have to say a word, but just being there, 
just presence, right? That, that rebuilds literally, and I was even reading a book how your brain is a plastic, right? Brain plasticity, your brain is a muscle and it can be trained and it can be healed, right? Even with our interactions with each other, right? I'm just saying, hey, God wants us to be fully whole and that's gonna take the intimacy with God, of course, number one, right? Just daily, but even with each other, right? Love, love is gonna, that's what's gonna heal us, right? To become fully whole, right? And the, I like this quote from Irenaeus, right? He's a second century bishop. And he says, the glory of God is a human that's fully alive, right? I remember when I was numb, I felt like I wasn't even human because I, I didn't experience emotions, right? God made me to be physically, emotionally, spiritually healthy, and I, I was lacking. And, I, and because I lacked, I didn't feel human. And God wants us fully functioning every way, right? Physically, emotionally, even emotionally. And then of course, spiritually. Right. God wants us fully whole, and that's what makes us human. That's what that's what that's what's gonna make us fully alive. Right. And so with that, I'm gonna just if y'all would join me in a prayer. Right. And I'm I'm gonna sit down. I'm sorry I took a while, but Father God, I I pray God that you lead us, Father God, and uh, even if it takes God pain, or even if it takes past the past to be addressed, Father God, whatever it takes for you to make me whole, God, let it be then, right, God? Because, Lord, even with Joseph, right, his brothers came back and that brought up so many emotions and it, all of his past trauma came right up to the surface, but it had to be dealt with, right? And it was very painful for him. He cried, but God, it's, if that's what it takes, God, then just help us, right? Because I know firsthand, God, that numbing myself does not help. Numbing myself, even, it killed me. I felt like I wasn't alive. I felt like a dead man walking. I felt like a zombie, right? For me to be fully alive, it's going to take the pain, right? So, Father God, I pray that no matter what it takes, God, that you make us whole, right? Because, Lord Jesus, you said it is your faith that has made you whole. God, our faith is only in you, God, and I'm praying that, that you make us whole. We are praying as a collective, God, as a group, as a church, God, that we can function for, in order for us to function as a, as a community, as the church, as the body of Christ, right? Hands be all, right? It's going to take the process, right? We got to, I guess, like trust the process, God, right? And you're going to do it. And Father God, I pray that you, by your will, God, we know it's, you, it's your will, right? Like my mom said, it's your will for us to be whole. So God, I pray that you make us whole. Right, even through the process, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.